On Friday, at the 131st anniversary of Garvey's birth, Culture Minister Babsy Grange announced that the government will be taking possession of the property. However, one of the occupants, Colleen Johnson, says Ms. Grange's announcement was premature as there has been no negotiations regarding compensation. We don't plan to go nowhere. As soon as they come and negotiate with us, we'll, we'll go wherever they want us to go. If we haven't got no de- negotiation happens and no consultation. Even though Ms. Babsy was saying um, it's final for her, it's not final for us. We haven't got no negotiation with nobody. Ms. Johnson notes that there are two houses on the property with seven occupants. She says during an informal conversation, the family was offered a three-bedroom house for resettlement. Ms. Johnson says that is unacceptable. I live in one and my sisters live in one. Suppose me no want to live with my sisters them no more. So me no have no choice. It is They're no. not offer nothing for us. I just tell you, no consultation. One day I was sitting under the clock and a man come to me telling me they're looking at house for us. But listen to me, it's a sloppy, untidy situation. You can negotiate. When you have an accident or anything, can you negotiate with people on the street? You take me with my attorney, and you sit me down with my sisters or the other stakeholders, and we sit and we have a talk. You can't have me on the clock and say I negotiate things with me on the clock. Ms. Grange has said the Commissioner of Lands has been given ministerial direction to take possession of the property. She states that this development clears the way for the establishment of the proposed Living History Museum in honor of the national hero. And the attorney for the occupants of Marcus Garvey's boyhood home, Linton Gordon, says he will be writing to the authorities on Tuesday for clarification of the announcement by Ms. Grange. He explains he will make it clear that the occupants are prepared to accept two houses as settlement. I believe... They should get a team of persons capable of understanding and appreciating difficulties that persons without anywhere to live are facing in Jamaica. Meet with the family, identify zones in which they are prepared to be relocated within regions of their social network and locate two homes, purchase them, give them, and move on. And they can set a cap, maybe nothing over 25 or 20 million, and they buy two, two, two bedroom, three bedroom or six, hand them over to them, and we move on. Mr. Gordon notes that the land has been valued at $3.2 million. However, he argues that would not be enough to purchase a home. He says his clients would be homeless if the authorities go ahead with the acquisition without settling the relocation issue. There is no letter offering any alternative accommodation. I tried to get Ms. Johnson this afternoon, but without success. But I think if she had gotten an offer, she would have let me know. So I'm prepared to say that there has not been any alternative accommodation offered to the residents up to today. So if they are being removed or evicted, it's likely they will end up on the street, under a bridge, or maybe someone can catch them up for the time being. In the meantime, research officer at Liberty Hall, Dr. Shaney Roper, has explained that the site is significant for teaching the values of Marcus Garvey and sharing his history with tourists. So when you take a monument, you are actually speaking about the identity of a people. What are the values? that you want to celebrate. So for example, Liberty Hall, which is one of the many kind of Liberty Halls, there are over a thousand Liberty Halls in the 1920s and 30s. And Liberty Halls were to be the center of cultural and educational engagement. So when you make a Liberty Hall a monument and you give it active purpose, then you are promoting a set of values that you want the people in the nation to acknowledge and also seek to embody. Cody and Barrett, Frontline News.